Welcome to the OutSystems lesson on adapting a pattern with CSS pseudo elements. In this lesson, we'll cover the following topics, including an example of how to adapt a pattern in OutSystems. First, we'll start with an overview of how you can adapt a pattern, and then we'll introduce the section expandable pattern and show an example of how you can adapt it with some custom CSS in OutSystems Service Studio. When you want to use a pattern that already exists, with some style and CSS customizations, we refer to this as adapting a pattern. The workflow for changing a pattern CSS style sheet typically involves using your chosen browser's developer tools to analyze the CSS of the original patterns and use it as a starting point. To accomplish that, you would first need to build a sample screen with the pattern. Then, you would open the browser developer tools to inspect the HTML structure and the CSS styles and classes used in the pattern. Using the developer tools, you can start making CSS changes directly in the browser's inspector style sheet while previewing them at the same time in the browser. Once you're happy with the result, you can copy and paste the CSS into the theme style sheet of your application. To demonstrate an example of adapting a pattern, we'll use the Silk UI section expandable pattern. The section expandable pattern defines a section with content which can be collapsed and expanded. The pattern has a clickable title that toggles the content visibly within the pattern's content section. In the following demo, we're going to adapt this pattern using CSS to customize our application. In the scenario of the demonstration, we have a screen with four instances of the section expandable pattern. Our goal is to change their colors, typography, arrow icons, add padding, and move some of the elements to different positions. This test application will be our working sample that will be examined in the browser's developer tools. It will serve as the starting point for the customization that we're going to perform. As mentioned earlier, we'll start by making and testing the changes in the browser and then take the changes back to Service Studio. Now that we've covered the steps to adapt this type of pattern, I'll show you how to do this in OutSystem Service Studio. In Service Studio, here we have the home page of our mobile application. What we're going to do is edit the section expandable screen. When I click on it, you can see the different content sections that have the mobile pattern applied. I'll click on the widget tree and we'll dig back down into this content and take a closer look at what we have. When I roll the mouse over the content section expandable pattern, there's a tooltip that gives us more information on this pattern. In the next steps, we'll launch this mobile application in Google Chrome and then use the Chrome developer tools to build out custom CSS styles for this screen. Here in the Google Chrome browser, I have the developer tools open and ready to work. I've previewed my screen, and now I'll right-click and choose Inspect. Here I can identify this class, Section Expandable, as one of the classes that I want to customize. So I'll click the plus button and begin to write some CSS code here. The first thing that will change is the background color. I'll change it to a very specific light blue and then move on to the border radius. For the border radius, we'll choose five pixels. The next style that I'll change here is the color of the text. We'll choose a color that's close to black. As I've updated these styles in Chrome Developer Tools, you can actually see them applied in the preview window. Also, what I'd like to do sometimes is click on the Inspector Style Sheet link and edit the styles directly in this style sheet window. For the next style, I'd like to add a 20 pixel margin top. However, I only want this applied to the bottom children, not the first child. So I'll write the following code. Once I've finished writing this code, I realize that it's not working. So I'll need to right click and choose inspect and let's go back and take a look at the code again. The data block is referenced in the Silk UI patterns as a wrapper for the patterns that we're using in this example. So I'll need to go back and I'll need to adjust this code and be sure to reference that attribute in the code as well. We'll add this piece of code right here, data block equals content dot section expandable. And when we do, you can immediately see that's updated and now functional in the preview window. In the next couple of steps, we'll work with the titles and the icons. I'm going to right click on the title and choose inspect once again. And then in the code, let's look for the section expandable title using flex we can adjust the order of the objects within the wrapper. Here you can also see the dividers class. So this is the class that we'll need to recreate here. Once again, I'll click the plus sign and then I'll begin to write the properties for this new class. I'll start with the color 
And for the color, I'll choose once again 333. Next, I'll choose a font weight. For this, we'll make it bold using 700. And then finally, I'll add an order and we'll set the order to 2. As soon as I set this property, you can see that the arrow icon moves to the far left. In the next step, I'm going to adjust the padding of the title. So I'll click the plus sign, create a new class once again, section expandable title, and then let's go ahead and adjust the padding properties. We'll set it to 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and 15. At this point, I'll click back on the inspector style sheet to take a look at all of the styles I've created so far. And at this point, to speed up the process a little, I'm going to paste a couple of styles that I already have created for this. Notice the section expandable title, dot tag compound selector, designates font size and padding, and then the section expandable icon has the order property set to one. This assures that my arrow icon has the first position within the container. Now let's take a closer look at the functionality of when we click on the icon or the title to expand this section. I'm going to right click once again and choose inspect. And notice in the elements window, whenever I expand or close this top option, we can see the class change to section expandable open. So we're going to need to write a class that will be applied to open as well as title. To do that, I'll click the plus sign to create another rule once again. The objective here is to create a border at the very bottom that'll be one pixel thin. We now have a border and it looks pretty good, but examining this closely shows me that the text is a little bit too close to the border. So I'm going to write this class to add just a little bit of padding. A padding of 15 pixels and 20 pixels should be just perfect. Now we'll work some CSS magic on the icon arrows in our application. I'll right click on the icon arrow and once again choose inspect. As we look into the elements, you can see that we have a before and after element here. So we'll start by working with the section expandable icon before. I'd like to create a very simple triangle for this, and I can easily create this using an online CSS generator. For this step, I'll choose bottom, and then I'll create an arrow that has 10 pixels in width and then six pixels in height. I'll also adjust the color as well. Once I have the code that I need, I can move back into DevTools and paste it into the panel. I can now see my new arrow in the Chrome DevTools environment. However, I'm going to click on the Inspector Style Sheet link and link back to the CSS styles to make some adjustments here. We'll need to address the after state of this icon once it's clicked, so I'll paste this code in the window and set the display to none. I'll add a background property of transparent, and then I'll adjust the top alignment to seven pixels. As I continue to make changes to the CSS, we can test and look in the preview window and see those changes applied. We also need to rotate this area just a bit. And for this property, we'll also need to add a WebKit prefix so that it works correctly. There's one small CSS change that I'd like to make before we're finished. Notice whenever I expand these sections, I'd like the arrow to either be pointing directly up or down. So I'll right click and choose inspect and create a class here that we can customize. I'll go back to the inspector style sheet so that I can code the CSS here. We'll need to add a transform property and then set the rotate to 180 degrees. Once we've written this code, we'll also need to write a line for WebKit as well. At this point, I have all of the styles created that I'd like to for this particular web screen. So I'll copy them all and then bring them back over into Service Studio and paste them in the CSS window. At this point, I've cleaned up and ordered my CSS styles according to any best practices that I follow. Here in Service Studio, I'll click the CSS window and then click on the Demo App tab. You can see at the top of the CSS window here that we do have a specific section for our custom CSS. I'll scroll to that section and then paste in all of the CSS code that I created in the Chrome DevTools window. Then I'll click OK and publish my changes to the OutSystems platform. Now that my application's been successfully published, I'll click on the preview window and we'll preview the application in the browser. I'll click on the section expandable screen and here you can see that all of the styles that we've created have been applied to the screen.